frequently see us playing with our dogs with a ball and a string or a ball and a rope, or in this case, a ball and a leather. Uh, we use these uh, extensively with our older dogs and our advanced dogs as an obedience reward, uh, especially the leather uh, handled ones. They're nice on the hands. It's easier to tug with the dog with the ball and a string, uh, a little less physical for us. Uh, and so once your dog has good targeting and outing skills, then we can transfer them to a ball and a string. A couple of considerations is teaching the dog to target the ball and not the string. That is generally easier if you have uh, a slightly stiffer handle on the dog. This leather handle allows me to hold relatively close to the ball without the ball swinging around a lot. A big mistake that people make when they're initially doing it is they want to hold here. They want to keep the ball away from their hand. Uh, they're trying to protect their hand. They're afraid the dog's going to actually get their hand. But when you do that, it's hard to hold the ball still. The ball moves, ball moves around. And the dogs are very likely to bite over the top of it and get the string. If your dog routinely gets the string, then they may start trying to target the string. So in the early stages, we want to prevent that. So we have a couple of techniques for doing it. One is I simply hold the string down close to the ball. And the, imagine my dog were here. I hold it like this and I pull up at an angle as I tell the dog to grab it. By doing this, my hand is behind the ball, covering the string. It's short, the ball stays steady. I pull this direction as the dog goes for it. As soon as they're hitting it, I let my hand slide back. And so that's one method. Uh, it works really well if your timing is good <laughs> and you know what you're doing, then the, the ball itself hides the string, the dog hits the ball. The issue is if you don't move your hand fast enough and you have a fast dog, they'll get the ball and your fingers. So another way of approaching that is we can put our, the flat of our hand like this when we initially teach it and pull the string through. And we can tell the dog to get it like this and our hand blocks their mouth. You need to keep your hand like this so that they're, they're hitting it this way. Don't turn your hand sideways because then they can bite the hand, your hand and it. But if your hand is like this, dogs can grab that. Also, if you have your hand there, a lot of dogs are a little more careful when they're initially grabbing it. Once the dog's on it, I can slide off and tug with them here. Outing the dog off a ball and a string is also uh, a little bit more difficult because to hold it still, I tend to pull on it. Right? And if I'm tugging against the ball while I'm asking the dog to let go, they tend to be reluctant to do so. And so what I'll do is I'll move up closer to it when I hold it still, and I'll try to take tension off the ball. So instead of pulling against the dog's mouth, I try to take all the tension out of it when I ask the dog to let go. Also, by having my hand closer, if the dog lets go, if I'm holding it here and the dog lets go, that thing swings around like that. And the movement's more likely to make the dog want to grab it again. But if I'm up close and I immobilize it and the dog lets go, the ball doesn't move, and the bug's less likely to try to cheap shot it and grab it again. And then by having my hand close like that, I'm in a position to present a reward again quickly and simply slide my hand up. Another thing you want to consider is if the dog were to slip off the ball, which happens, right? Your dog bites the ball, slides off. Now they're coming back at you. <laughs> this is a dangerous situation. So you have two choices. One is choke up on the ball and immediately spin your body sideways and start moving straight away from the dog, right? So that way you get your body out from behind it in case the dog goes for it and you hold it steady so the dog has a clear path. If I'm holding it like this, it's swinging all over the place. Do not let it be in front of your body there. And so if that's not feasible for you in the moment, it happens too fast, you find yourself on the wrong foot, then simply drop the ball on the ground. We say, abort, abort, get out of it, right? So one of the easiest ways to get bit with the ball on a string is when the dog slides off and you're not ready and the ball's hanging in front of your body and they come back for it and they get you. They accidentally get your hand. Another thing, something we talk about routinely in all of our play with dogs, is once you have the dog targeting the ball, straight presentations are really important. Lots of people, when they use the ball, they'll go like this and they'll swing in circles. And if you arc that ball a lot, the dog will start to cut in and they're gonna start biting the string. So I move like this in straight lines or like this in straight lines so that the dog has a clear target and the ball is the main target. Uh, one final consideration when playing with a ball and a string is the size and hardness of the ball itself. The size of the ball is dependent on the size of the dog's mouth, right? So a smaller dog needs a smaller ball, a larger dog needs a larger ball. But the other thing is a younger dog will need a ball that's a little softer. If you have, this is a hard rubber ball, which is great for experienced dogs. It lasts like crazy, it's sturdy, and the dogs like it. But if I put a younger dog on this, they bite it, and it's hard to hold on to because it's firm. And if they slip off, 
and try and they slip off a couple of times and happen to get the string, the string is easier to hold on to than the ball and then they'll start targeting the string. So make sure you have a developmentally appropriate ball on the end of the string. So softer for younger dogs, uh, smaller for smaller dogs, and then firmer as the dogs get better at it. And if you're interested in a more uh, thorough treatment of play techniques for your dog, check out our Advanced Concepts and Motivation and our Power Playing Tug DVDs. Okay.